brought to you by Allstate, whose policies now include protection for your home, your family, as well as your car. You're in good hands with Allstate. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Our guest panelist this evening is the toast of Tuesday night, when the Gary Moore Show starts its new season this Tuesday at 10 p.m. Welcome, please, Gary Toast, a uh, Gary Moore. Thank you, Arlene. And here from this theater, which is just around the corner from Broadway, we present the young lady who so brilliantly, five days a week, has a column called On Broadway, Ms. Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, I'd like everyone out there to know that the president of Random House treats his girl authors so well that one of them just celebrated her 102nd birthday. Her name is Grandma Moses. Here's is Bennett Surf. Grandma Moses, not only 102, but she was so kidney, she stole a doctor's stethoscope when he visited <laughs> her on her birthday. Well, here's our panel moderator, John Daly, who's just come back from Montana, where he's done a very necessary job. He's on the Water Control Pollution Board. Uh, they've taken care of trying to get us some clean water. We may not have clean air, but we must have clean water if we're going to live. And John's done a good job this week, and I hope you'll be kind to us on What's My Line tonight. I have been out in Montana all week on this problem of clean water, and I must say that it's very heartening to go out into the Northwest where we talk to people from Montana and Oregon and Washington and Idaho and to find how many elements of the community are concerned about our problems in clean water. I think if we could get all of the rest of the nation as interested in the problem as they are out there, uh, we'll lick the problem pretty soon. But that's a serious subject and we have some fun ahead of us, I hope, with Gary Moore on the panel. I'm sure we have some fun ahead of us. Those of you who saw I've Got a Secret last week know that uh, Gary has a young lady sitting on the top of a pole right in this theater because this is the theater from which Gary does his program. He took me around and introduced me this evening, suggested I shinny up, but I was afraid he'd grease the pole. That's how much faith I had in Gary, right? You can call her on the phone, John, but she is not allowed to accept any company, male or female, during her incumbency. It's going to be a grim night. That's all I have to say after that pronouncement. But it's lovely to have you with us, Gary. I must say we are all admirers of your splendid talents, and it's um, an honor to have you sitting on our panel. Those three chums of mine sitting next to you are going to have a rough time, and I trust we're going to give you a rough time, too. I know you are. Well, tonight, let's change rules a bit and go right to our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mabel, Mabel Tom, is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Tom? Miss Tom, and where are you from? Hong Kong. From Hong Kong. How long have you been in the United States? 15 years. Oh, you've been here a good deal, good deal of the time. Then. Well, it's nice to have you with us, and what's my line? May I present you to our panel, Miss Tom? And now, will you join me over here, please? Uh, tell me, Miss Tom, do you know how we keep score on What's My Line? Uh, yes. All right, fine. If you know how we keep score, we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. Oh. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Miss Tom is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Bennett Cerf. Miss Tom, 
uh, I'm going to guess wrong this time, I'm sure, but do you work for a profit-making organization? Pardon me? Do you work do you, for do a profit-making? Do you perform making? your service for a corporation that, that makes a profit? Yes. You do? Have you anything whatever to do with the world of entertainment? No. No, not specifically. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. Is your service a service that those of us that are on the panel might enjoy, Miss Tom? Could be. Would we come for you, to you for your service? Uh, yes. We would deal directly with you? Yes. Uh, uh, do you work indoors? Yes. Do you work in a place that uh, many people come? Yes. Yes? Is it um, a place that one would come to at special hours? No. No, that's two down and eight to go, Mr. Moore. I may say I feel a close kinship because my first name is Tom. And I'm proud to be related. I, I have an uncle, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Flattery will get you nothing, Gary. All right, now, this, this service you say that people come to you for, do, do you render the service to uh, an individual one at a time as opposed to rendering the service for a large group? at the same time. Before you answer that, let's us have a small conference. That was pretty inevitable, wasn't it? I think he's doing it in Chinese. <laughs> Taking a long time. Mm -mm. Gary, um, this is a little bit difficult to answer. Swell. In the evolution of the service as it is given, it would be, I think, possible to agree that the service has a very personal character as between Miss Tom and the individual receiving it. However, in the aggregate, we might agree that the service generally is offered to more than one at a time. So you go ahead from there. <laughs> offered to more than one at a time. Well, if there are more than one people are, in, uh, uh, persons are involved, personal contact must be ruled out. Am I correct? You mean physical contact? Personal physical contact. Yes, I would say that's fair. Mm -hmm. uh, this then has to do with oral communication. She is this, uh, something that she says to them. Is the spoken word involved? In a way. In a way. Um, does, it, does it have to do anything with, with in, informing uh, this group in any way? You mean in a substantive sense? Yes. Giving them information that they would be necessarily uh, benefited by yes. over the long term? I have a feeling... That's three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. <laughs> Miss Tom, could a man do what you do? Uh, yes. Would you say that there are more men doing what you do than women? Yes. Do you ever do your work at night? Yes. Do you ever do it in what might be called an arena? No, Dorothy, I don't think we could agree that it was an arena. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Tom, is there any physical dexterity necessary for the service that you perform? Mm -hmm. yeah. in, in a way, yes. Uh, do you do some kind of an exhibition of either a sport or uh, an exercise or anything of that sort for people? No. Mm -hmm. no. no. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Do you have anything to do with transportation in any way, Miss Tom? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Moore. Have you anything to do with food? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. You do work indoors more than outdoors, is that correct? Yes. And you move about a great deal in your work. No. That's eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Miss Tom, do you need any special kind of uniform for the work you do? You, you perform other than a regular street costume, whether it be the New York's latest fashion or Hong Kong's latest fashion, but is it a special kind of uniform that you wear? Yes. Well, I would say here, Bennett, we won't give you a no, because although it is a uniform, which I think Miss Tom would agree she is required to wear within general I terms didn't mean of reference, army uniform. it is not garb which you would not uh, wear uh, very reasonably in, in normal pursuit of the day. Miss Tom, do you wear this garb for protective purposes, to keep yourself clean, to keep dirt away from yourself? No. No. Nine down and one to go, Miss Francis. 
Miss Tom, do you advise or instruct or give information in any way? Sometimes. Would you... Sometimes? Yes. Is the place in which you work a large place as opposed to a small shop? Mm, yes. Would it be something other than a business office? Yes. Uh, Dorothy just had a flash over here. Could I have her Chinese puzzle? You can uh, have puzzle? 30 seconds for a conference. Maybe you're thinking of the same thing. I was thinking of an airline terminal. I was thinking no, of a hospital. No, because I said transportation I was before. Of a hospital. She might have something to do with medical. Well, what's we the physical dexterity that she needs if she doesn't move about a great deal? Maybe she delivers babies or something. <sighs> Maybe it's something with her hands, then. Uh, my weenie is no good. Do you use your hands in your work, Miss Tom? Yes. Do you lay them on anything or anybody in your work? At times. Do you lay them on somebody rather than something? Oh, you lay them on something. <laughs> <laughs> Ten down and no more to go. Well, I told you it was going to be a rough night, panel. Miss Tom is a blackjack dealer in the Palace Club in Reno and oh. has been for the last five years. All right, I can see on the panel's collective faces I'm about to be tagged. Yes, Miss Francis? Well, that's, that's entertainment. entertainment. It no, the, but what the... Miss, Miss Tom does not entertain. She's, she just is there performing a normal routine service. If you were to hold that Miss Tom was an entertainer, then I would say to you by the same reference, in terms of reference, uh, a young stenographer sitting in an office taking doing a typewriting job is entertaining, too. You ought to come around my office sometime. <laughs> Unprofitable. Well, I think. Ex <laughs> well, that's the, the point is made, but I think exhibitions. Uh, no, for I instance, Scarney, Clark. when he does his exhibitions of how yeah. you can, can be proficient with yeah. cards and things, that's entertainment. I hate to but, admit it, uh, but I think John's I right. <laughs> well, how do you like? I think I'll go back to Montana again. This hasn't happened in years. <laughs> Miss Tom, thank you very much. It's been nice to have you with us, and a long and happy career in what you're up to. Okay. Thank you. Will you say good night to the panel? I would like to add here, actually, I don't know anything about this particular area, but Bennett is very proficient in it, and blackjack is very much like uh, Vente Urn or 21 when you play it at home. It's, it's, uh, it's good fun, actually, isn't it, Bennett? It is entertaining. Yes, indeed. If you wish. Well, now let's see what we can do with the second challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? Stephen Lang. Or Langer. Nice to see you, sir. Is it Mr. Lang or Langer? Langer. Langer. Well, I wanted to get it right, you know. Mr. Lang is pronounced. Lang would be Lange. the anglicization right. of Langer. That's right. Are you from Scandinavia? Uh, well, no, I am German descent. German descent. Well, it's nice to have you with us, sir. Where are you from? Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Yes. Well, may I present you to our panel, Mr. Langer. Will you join me over here, sir? Do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. Fine, then let's let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Langer is salaried, deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Mr. Langer, does your service uh, keep you in one place in Washington rather than make you travel around? Now, before, you, you mean from city to city or yes. rather does he stay in the general environs of do Washington? Do you stay in the general environs of where you do your job? Yes. Uh, would the President of the United States ever need your services? <laughs> he might. Would us less important people ever need your services? You could. Uh, would we deal with you directly? Yes. Now, may I say here, what we're trying to convey is that in a proper circumstance, the president or any member of the panel might want to make the service which uh, is here offered um, useful to them. Thank you, John. I extrapolate from that. No information. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mr. Langa, uh, do you work indoors? Sometimes. Do you get around in your work? Yes. Would you ever go to the house of anybody that needs your services? Oh, I could. Do you work for a non-profit making organization? No. No. One down, nine to go, Mr. Moore. Uh, I sensed from the audience reaction that there is perhaps uh, something uh, of a daring do nature. In other words, it's 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 more spectacular the uh, occupation than uh, the ordinary man has. Sometimes. Sometimes. Is there sometimes physical danger involved? Yes, could be. Is this physical danger as a result of something that you yourself purposely do? Well, I can think of some of the things he might do that might increase the factor of physical danger, yes. Well, is the factor of physical danger ever increased by the actions of another person? Could. Uh, but I don't think this is, you know, I think this is true, Gary, but I don't think as a line of questioning it will necessarily lead to any really fruitful conclusions. Ah. Do you perform your services, are you more likely to perform them for a, a largish group rather than for a lone individual? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily, but I think it's possible that the services we would agree uh, in terms of your, the first part of your question, could be performed for a largish group. Oh, yes, yeah. sure. Do people, uh, do, do people come in groups to, to watch this? Sometimes. Not as a rule. Yeah, and I would say here, Gary, in the interests of, of the rest of the panel, I'm going to give you a no, because they would not come with any predetermined desire to watch. So that's two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Longer, do you need any special training for your work? Yes. Do you use your hands in your work? Yes. Uh, are you involved with any type of vehicle? No. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Longer, we did determine that you worked for a profit-making organization, did we not? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> and that you are sometimes outdoors and sometimes <clears throat> indoors. Yes. Could you possibly perform your service either on the water or in the air? Well, not likely. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. In extreme sir. cases. <laughs> it would have to be so extreme, Barrett, I think you let us rule it out. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Uh, Mr. Longa, is there anything about your work uh, that uh, people might come and praise you for what you have accomplished, compliment you? Sometimes. Does it have anything whatsoever to do with the culinary arts? No? <laughs> no. No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Moore. But there is a tool of some nature which you use to perform your services. Uh, as a rule, not all. Uh, could this tool even vaguely be described as a weapon? <laughs> no. No. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. I'm going to give you one more minute. Do you use this tool on something rather than someone? No. You use it on someone? Take it from there. No, please. wait a minute, Lip. Let's, let's stop here for a second. <laughs> hey, this is rough. Hey, you've been answering questions about a tool. <laughs> Would you like to rephrase your question, Dorothy? I don't see how I possibly could. <laughs> um, I, I, I thought it was quite clear. Um, if you use a tool in your work, and I think we established that through Gary, do you use it on something inanimate rather than on something animate? No. That's fine. Thank you very much, Miss Kilgallen. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Langer, is your work in any way connected with money or finance? Who no. isn't? <laughs> no. Eight down and two to go, Miss Francis. Mr. Langer, do you deal only with humans and not in any way with animals? No. Nine oh, down and one to go, I Mr. Moore. The other way. Yes, but so thanks for making. Doesn't have to do with animals. <laughs> <laughs> You wouldn't believe I hadn't been on the show for five years. I'm so quick. <laughs> it has to do with animals. Yes. Ah. Um, do you in any way train? 
The no. Apple. No. Ten down and no more to go, but I think you would have made it if we'd had a little bit more time to give you on the scoring plan. I guess you probably can guess now what it is that Dr. Langer does. Veterinarian? He's a veterinarian, and more specifically, and he doesn't horse? mind the term, a horse, a a horse, horse doctor. doctor, he calls My himself. My favorite kind of doctor. <laughs> He's with the, um, Alamara, <laughs> Alamara, Alamara Arabian Horse Farm. Doctor is with the Almara Arabian Horse Farm, which is the biggest in the country. The no, biggest probably sure. in the world. And they're just magnificent horses. Yes. Aren't they? 250 yes. purebred Arabs. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Thank Doctor. You. It's wonderful to have you with us in Washington. And we'll meet tonight's mystery guest. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which the panel is always blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? Well, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with Gary Moore. Uh, judging by the ovation, I would say that offhand, the audience is somewhat fond of this person. Um, <laughs> are you a gentleman? I mean by that generic. <laughs> I think the answer is yes to that, Miss Kilgallen. Why doesn't we the guess answer? Can we hear would you the say guess? yes? No. <laughs> Said no, he wouldn't say yes. Let's try the next question, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, do you weigh more than 150 pounds? Uh, uh, yes. Mr. Sir? Uh, do you come from a foreign country? Often. I. <laughs> Miss Francis? That's ducking a question. Are you a television personality? Mm, yes. Mr. Moore? Seen on a res... Uh, je ne comprends pas. Uh, on a regularly scheduled series? No. Mm, no. no. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, are you also a playwright? Mm, no. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. But you do play the piano, do you not? <laughs> and are you Mr. Victor Borg? Yes, we do. <laughs> it is indeed. Victor, uh, next Wednesday evening on CBS from 9 to 10 p.m. is going to do one of those incomparable special programs which only Victor Borger can do, this magnificent talent. And I, you, on, you go ahead and be embarrassed, I'll talk. <laughs> this magnificent talent as a pianist, which he happily, as men of all genius have, uh, has a sense of humor about him, and this, this makes for wonderful entertainment. But I have a surprise for you. We just had a gentleman on, I don't know whether you heard, who used to treat a horse doctor, used to treat, um, you know, he treats Arabians now, but he was a horse doctor for Did you. you. Treat Danes also? Treat Danes also. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember Yes, him? yes. from California. When he lived Dr. Langer. Langer. Yes, yes. He used yes. To take care of yes. your horses. We didn't have any horses, but he took care of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Victor, it's wonderful to There's see some you. Horse again. flies. Horse flies. <laughs> yes. Saddle any of them? No, he just took care of them. Just <laughs> took care of the horse flies. Are they still with you? One only. One only one. <laughs> I would, you know, I'm silly to try this because he'll take my ears off and give them back to me if I try to night with you. We know it's going to be a wonderful show on Wednesday night, and thank you for coming back on television again. Uh, thank you John, very much. Yes, nice yes, to Victor, thank, thank you. Thank you. Have we got time. Vector, a girl in the Miss America contest did your whole punctuation act. I wondered if you had given her permission to do this or if he just, she just lifted it. No, she asked for permission, and I gave it to her. Oh, well, wonderful. Nice. I think she was very sweet to ask for permission. <laughs> she was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Victor, very much. Thank wonderful to have you on this. Panel, you've had a rather rough time of it tonight so far. <laughs> we'll be back after this word from our sponsor.
We're a bit short of time, so I will say good night for everybody. And I also want to, to be sure that you know that tomorrow night on I've Got a Secret, all of our panel is going to appear in contest with Gary Moore's panel. It should be fun. Good night, and thanks for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line? It's a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. 